couple of months ago, I discussed the real life equivalents of a few of the plant-based Pokemon you can catch in Pokemon Go. You can watch that video by clicking the link in the top right, whichever side that is. Today, I will be covering a few more. Last time, I talked about my personal favorite Pokemon, Oddish, but I also love the Pokemon Oddish ultimately evolves into Vileplume. I think Vileplume looks like the flowers in the genus Brafflesia. There are a few really cool things about these plants. Firstly, they're parasitic. This means that they produce no chlorophyll, so can't photosynthesize and produce energy themselves. Instead, they sap resources from vines in the genus Terastigma. It has a special appendage, these plants, called the Historium, which it grows inside of the other plant's vines, allowing it to absorb nutrients. Rafflesia flowers can also be huge. The five-petaled flowers of Rafflesia Rafflesia arnoldi are up to 39 inches wide, and these flowers produce a lovely rotting smell. This feature has earned them a title also given to the Titan Arum, which is the corpse flower. This smell draws in pollinators, like beetles and flies that tend to feed on rotting meat. Presumably, this means that Vileplume doesn't smell so great. This next Pokemon technically isn't plant-based, but I still think it's super cool and related to plants. Scyther, this green guy right here, looks a lot like a praying mantis. There are actually almost 2,500 species of mantis, all in the order Mantidea. They have triangular heads with long forelegs held out in front of their body, thus giving them the common name praying mantis. Pictured here is Mantis religiosa, the European mantis. The females of this species are generally bigger, and as a result, only the males and young females are able to fly. Like most mantids, they feed on other insects. They are ambush predators. They use those huge eyes to spot prey and catch them quickly on their long arms. And the thing that mantises may be most famous for, aside from their appearance, is sexual cannibalism. AKA, in some cases, the female mantis eats the male after mating. In a 1991 study, researchers found that in the European mantis, sexual cannibalism occurred in 31% of encounters in the wild. And when it does occur, the female often begins by breaking off the male's head. So mantises are pretty hardcore, and you probably shouldn't mess with Scyther. And finally, I'm going to talk about Jumpluff, this adorable, fluffy little Pokemon. I am reminded of dandelions, a very common and maligned weed. As a kid, I loved dandelions and didn't understand why people disliked them so much. Dandelions are in the Asteraceae family in good company with sunflowers. What's most distinctive about them, however, is their seeds. They are evolved for wind distribution, which is what makes them so fun for kids. And dandelions are in the genus Taraxicum, and those seeds are called Cipsella. Basically, each Cipsella carries one seed and has a fluffy offshoot that helps it catch the wind. That fluff is actually called the pappus and is derived from the calyx of the flower. That's the part of the flower that has the sepals, the green petal-like tabs below the petals. For more info on flower anatomy, click the link in the top right. When they're fully mature, the Cipsella get caught in the wind, hopefully to carry them somewhere and land somewhere new where they can grow and flourish. Here is an up-close image of a Cipsella from Sonara cadunculus, another plant in the Asteraceae family. Another thing I love about dandelions is that they are survivors. They're known as ruderals, which are plants that grow first in disturbed soil. So they're the first plants to move in on an area and they're very adaptable, which is pretty damn cool. Dandelions are also a great source of food for pollinators, so I encourage you to leave them be even if they're ruining your lawn. Maybe you can just pretend they're adorable Pokemon. All right, that's three more IRL versions of some awesome Pokemon. If there's other Pokemon you'd like me to talk about, let me know. And as a reminder, today, January 31st, is the last day to enter a giveaway for a lovely JSTOR Global Plants poster that I have. Click the link to watch my last video and check it out. As always, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to get new videos right in your feed, and comment with any questions you might have. And as a final reminder, if you'd like to support Brilliant Botany so I can make more and better content, become a supporter over on Patreon. Even just $1 a month is massively helpful in covering the costs of running this channel, and you get access to cool perks. I also have a selection of awesome merch so that you can be stylish and support science communication at the same time. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you soon.